Let's now move to um, the EMRO region. Um, Dr. Barakat, please. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me today to participate in this, uh, in this panel. So, um, I think, uh, following on from the, this, the, the talks that we've just heard, the WHO Eastern Mediterranean region consists of 21 countries and one territory. Um, and within, within the, the EMRO region, there were 23 million cases of COVID during the pandemic and uh, a reported 348,000 deaths. Of course, we believe this is an underestimate. Uh, there are certain countries that uh, um, weren't uh, fully uh, at capacity in terms of their ability to test, diagnose, um, uh, and to manage the cases. So we, we suspect the numbers are greater in the Eastern Mediterranean region. Um, and if you allow me to go into the UAE as a specific example, and then we can, uh, we can explain how within the UAE there were uh, initiatives that helped other regions in EMRO, uh, other countries. So within the United Arab Emirates, where you are today, uh, the population is, is approximately 10 million people. And in the last uh, uh, almost three years, we've had 1 million cases of uh, COVID diagnosed by PCR, uh, of whom, uh, unfortunately, 2,000 348 passed away. So that, that gives us a kind of average case fatality ratio of around 0.2%. Um, the, the way that the country dealt with the, with the pandemic, so the UAE's response, had several pillars in it. But if, if we can um, concentrate on some of the most important, and I would say the most important one, was uh, wise leadership at the <coughs> highest level. So a governance at the highest level that was able to coordinate um, the national response. So uh, the whole of government response, the whole of society response, all coordinated in a seamless manner. Uh, I, I think all too often we see cases where resources may be available, but the, the, something goes wrong with the governance or the leadership and, and you don't get the optimum uh, outcome. So I, I think leadership is extremely important. Uh, other pillars to, to the response, obviously uh, uh, the infection prevention and control program nationally that's comprehensive, robust, protecting the most vulnerable, protecting frontline workers. You have, uh, um, I'd say the th third pillar is, uh, is laboratory testing. If you can't diagnose it accurately and quickly, you, you lose, you, you, you lose uh, the ability to fight COVID. You know, when you, when you can diagnose it uh, urgently within 24 hours, you, you can implement your isolation and, and preventive measures much more effectively. The UAE actually conducted 200 million tests, PCR tests, in the last three years. Um, that's 20 times the size of the population. So on average, an individual would have had uh, over 20, 20 tests on average. Um, then comes vaccination. So we, we, uh, no country could have protected itself against hospitalization and mortality without a, an effective vaccination program. And the UAE started clinical trials and vaccination as early as uh, summer 2020. By September, there was emergency use of uh, vaccination. Uh, and by June 2022, the United Arab Emirates had uh, achieved 100% of its target of vaccination of its target groups. Um, so uh, I think this is, this is really a key component of a country's ability to reduce hospitalizations and, and death. Um, furthermore, uh, last year, uh, the construction started on a vaccine, a local vaccine manufacturing plant that will produce 200 million doses of vaccines. And again, this goes back to uh, the EMRO region and Africa and other countries <coughs> that are in need. These 200 million uh, doses every year will, will go to support uh, not just the UAE, but the region and, and, and other countries in the world. Um, there are there are other pillars, and if I can, in the interest of time, maybe just concentrating on, concentrate on one more, which is urgent and critical resource mobilization. So both in terms of prioritizing domestic budget towards COVID, uh, getting equipment uh, mobilized and, and uh, supplied to hospitals where they need it. Uh, and of course, human resource. Um, how do you mobilize a team 
at urgent, uh, uh, in, uh, at urgent times uh, in, in, in very short, uh, with very short notice. Um, the question is, who, who are these people? Who, who, who makes up the front line? The, the UAE is unique in that uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed launched the Frontline Heroes Office uh, in June 2020 to uh, dedicate it to looking after all frontline workers in the country, to, to champion them, to listen to their needs, to support them. And, and the office uh, set up a, a, a registry. The registry has now 135,000 files e for each frontline worker. We know their, their individual circumstances, their personal needs. The office have, has supported them with education for themselves, for their children, with health needs, so physical and mental health support. It's worked with the central bank to, to try ease to, to ease the, um, the, the stress of repaying loans. Um, and for those that are expatriates, they've given them uh, golden visas to help uh, retain them and support them in the country. <coughs> um, and for the category of frontline workers that have sacrificed the most, those that have died, we call them the fallen heroes. The office actually uh, has adopted their children and spouses. We, we look after them. Uh, we, we make sure they have uh, their schooling covered, their healthcare covered, their housing covered. So we don't forget those that have sacrificed the most. And I think my final point is it's not enough just to look within your own country. Uh, the United Arab Emirates was one of the first to, to help internationally. And uh, in the course of the pandemic, uh, over 2,000 tons of medical aid has been distributed to 135 countries. Um, uh, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think in summary, if, if you ask me what was the most important uh, element of the UAE's response uh, or, or any other countries, I, I would say wise leadership. You know, you need wise leadership to, to coordinate national efforts and to, to help with urgent and critical resource mobilization. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for that focus on, on healthcare, frontline healthcare workers. I must say I'm not aware of any other country uh, that would have set up a special office dedicated to healthcare workers, uh, reporting basically to the highest level of, of, of government.